Nike come out with some amazing products and some of their technology and concepts that they develop are really incredible. Whether you like them or hate them, it's really hard to deny that. But occasionally Nike do a misstep and some of their tech doesn't always work out in the way they probably hoped it would. In front of me are three shoes that have tech in them that Nike no longer use as part of any of the shoes in their current lineup. Let's get into it. Now I think it's amazing that Nike are such a powerhouse and that they are able to continue to push the boundaries and try new things. Even if it doesn't always work out, it's always good to see what else is achievable in the realm of Sneakerland. If we just kept maintaining the status quo, we'd probably all still be running around in the Tailwind 79 or the Pegasus 83. The shoe in front of me right now is the Nike Zoom Fly, and as part of its midsole setup is a Lunalon midsole. React is very much what replaced the Lunalon midsole. The Lunalon foam itself was first seen in shoes around 2005. They were mostly prototypes. The first shoes that were available to the public being released in around 2008. The foam itself was designed for basketball players and for runners. The objective behind developing Lunalon was to create a foam that was soft, well cushioned, but also ultra responsive. Working with the Lunalon midsole initially was pretty challenging for the designers. It was a marshmallowy type of midsole, and so while it compressed really nicely to provide a cushion feel, it wouldn't spring back or provide the responsiveness that they were looking to generate from the midsole. In the end, what ended up happening with the Lunalon midsole itself was that it was encased within a thin layer of EVA around that Lunalon compound that was held together with glue. By moving to a React midsole, Nike were able to maintain the same objectives that they were looking to achieve with Lunalon, but were able to do it more efficiently, more responsiveness, but also lighter weight. They were able to remove that second layer of foam that encapsulated the Lunalon midsole itself and in the process remove the need to have the glue holding it together. I don't think Lunalon was a failure at all. I think Lunalon was very much a compound that was needed at the time that it was developed and it provided a stepping stone onto better technologies like what we have today in the React midsole. The next shoe I've got is the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, the original version of the Vaporfly Next Percent and this version before it was updated with the mesh and flyknit uppers had a vapor weave upper. This was a upper that was pretty limited in its implementation across Nike's running shoes. Probably the standout feature of the Vapor Weave is the fact that it is lightweight and so it does pair really nicely with what shoes like the Vapor Fly were looking to achieve. The issue with Vapor Weave I think was its limited use case. If not used on a shoe like the Vapor Fly Next Percent and in the way that the Vapor Fly Next Percent uses it, which is based basically a very stripped back upper. There was little benefit over the excellent mesh or fly knit options that Nike have today. I'm specifically thinking about its train wreck of an implementation in the Nike Zoom Fly 3. That had a vapor weave upper, but that was casing a neoprene booty. There's no point in having something that's lightweight and breathable if you're casing it around something that traps in heat anyway. Like Lunalon, I don't see the vapor weave upper as a total failure, but I think it is just not solving a problem that can't be solved with one of the other excellent upper options that Nike has in its arsenal. The next shoe here is the Nike Joyride Run Flyknit, and unlike the Lunalon midsole and the Vaporweave uppers, which I don't think were total failures, this, I think, was an absolute bomb. Not the bomb, but like a bomb. The tech in this shoe is the Joyride 
midsole. It's basically like tens of thousands of beads in the footbed of the shoe. It's encapsulated within the foam. I don't quite know what the foam is, but those beads, those tiny beads expand and sort of shape to your foot. In this guy, which is the Flyknit version, it had those beads across the entire footbed. The other version, which I think was the Joy Ride Jewel Run or something like that, only had the beads in the heel and in the midfoot. Either way, I don't think this was a well-implemented technology. The shoe's design itself isn't great and the upper isn't comfortable, which only makes the whole experience that much worse. But I also think that the feeling underfoot is just plain weird. One of the major complaints about the shoe wasn't probably either of those things that I've mentioned, but the fact that there was moisture that was always able to get into this midsole setup and, you know, compromise the beads or do something like that. The two shoes that were released with the Joy Ride cushioning system were running shoes, but I honestly couldn't imagine running in this shoe. I didn't feel like it was particularly responsive. I found the way that the beads would form underneath my foot to be annoying and there is no way that this would offer me a better experience than a shoe with just a standard EVA midsole. I don't think we will see this tech come back unless it's released as like a vintage model many years from now. It's really just a gimmick as far as I'm concerned and doesn't really offer any benefits that I can see anyway. If you remember any other tech that was used in shoes and no longer is used in shoes, whether it was good or bad, let me know what those are in the comments below. But until the next video, laters.